start or uh, you want to finish? No, you're starting. You're okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you did the offering, and I didn't know if uh, something was supposed to happen before you know when the offering was finished or, or what. So I just want to make sure. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here, and. Uh, static there because of the bush here, so um, I was trying to get that out of the way so it wouldn't hear me breathing into it. Okay, hopefully this will work, and I uh, sure appreciate uh, all you folks for many years. I know there's new folks that are here since the last time we were here, and uh, but you all have had a part here at uh, Colonial Baptist for in what we've been doing for the last... 15, over 15 years, and uh, just so appreciative of that. Uh, sorry here, I'm trying to find my place, my device. Uh, technology is a great thing when it works. Amen. And when I first turned, and uh, I got a little bit of a surprise because as we were singing here, I turned this on, and it said... Uh, something, words to the effect that the uh, flash card does not exist. Well, I knew it did exist. And so, anyway, I was, anyway, it's working now. But anyway, that was, uh, had a good, oh, so I'm where I need to be. And I'm used to being in the radio, and one of the things that gives great comfort is having a script to read from. Having a piece of, having something there that's uh, the news, the weather, whatever it is. It's there, and it's something solid, and uh, of course, you know, a lot of times there's opportunity not to have that as well, but uh, anyway, I was saying, I'm really glad to be here. We have with me, uh, I think my wife, Lori, is maybe helping to do a few pictures, uh, and my daughter, Michaela, who's 14, is here with us, glad to have her here, and she's, yesterday woke up with a sore throat and wasn't feeling good, and so I not sure she's going to talk very loud if you talk to her, but uh, anyway, we're glad to be here, and we uh, are just thankful for the Lord's provision in many ways. I don't think we've said thank you enough as we've thought about things, and uh, that's one of the reasons we're here. You've been a part of our ministry in rural Alaska since our deputation began in 2001, and you've continued faithfully since then with prayers and financial support and work teams. In fact, I was just talking to one of the guys here after Sunday school that uh, came up in 2005 with a work team. And had a great time uh, helping us get firewood and some other things, and, uh, ladies working in the office. But uh, you've been a part of that, providing support, work teams, special gifts. And I just want to thank you for all you've done for these years. Uh, as we've anticipated our return to Ohio and seeing those who have had a part in our ministry, we considered what we should say about our years in Alaska. And as Lori and I have discussed this, two things were clear to us. Number one, we need to say thank you. Thank you to the folks who have supported us. And thank you to the Lord God. Uh, and uh, we're just thankful for, these, uh, for, well, for what he's allowed us to do and be a part of. We need to give glory to God for His faithfulness and grace in our lives, number two. We want to give glory to God for His grace in our lives. So following that vein of thankfulness, I'm going to read from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 to 12. Some familiar words. Uh, King David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. The previous verses tell us that this was done with great fanfare and celebration. David had appointed singers and players of various instruments to praise the Lord. And it was apparent on this occasion that he wrote the words, which I'm going to read. Uh, There's also found in uh, Psalm 105. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek, seek His presence continually. Remember the wonderful works that He has done, His miracles and the judgments He uttered. And uh, we are 
truly thankful for what God has done. Uh, he has provided for us all our needs since we left Cedarville for Alaska in September of 2003. Some, especially a few closer family members, said, you're going to be a missionary, you're going to be poor and destitute. That did not happen. The Lord has shown otherwise. The Lord has been our guide through dark places. I think of the words of Psalm 119, 105, which says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Sometimes it's step by step. Take one step. You have to take that step to find out what the next step is going to be. We are encouraged by the words of Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. He comforts us in our trials. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. The Lord used Christian radio when I was in high school to plant the seeds of his word which led to my salvation during my junior year in high school. And in the following years, Christian radio was one of the means that he used to help me grow in his word. So I felt a call to work in Christian radio because it had an impact in my life. At least that was one of the reasons. I think it was uh, God directing and with the talents that I had. I think the scripture talks about, you know, even uh, Mordecai saying to Esther, perhaps uh, you were born for such a time as this. Uh, I think we, you know, the opportunities that we have this day, that I would have as a blind person in this day, uh, which would be far different than somebody, say, years ago. The Lord provided for me so that I was able to work at WCDR. Many folks remember WCDR was owned by Cedarville, for a long time was called The Path, uh, and uh, owned by Cedarville University and a network of stations that had an impact here in this area down into southern Ohio and uh, eastern Indiana and into Kentucky for many years. I worked there 19 years until we went to Alaska to serve with Voice for Christ Ministries. And we went to serve with Voice for Christ Ministries in Alaska in 2003. At that time, we had five children ranging in age from 11 years old down to Michaela, who at that time was only nine months old. Uh, VFCM has a network of Christian radio stations serving the interior of Alaska and a number of primarily native villages located off the road system. This means the only access to these places is by plane or boat. Now, we didn't live in such a condition. We lived in Nenana. So, Nanano is a native village, it's on, I mean, it was about half and half uh, uh, Caucasian, uh, white people, uh, and uh, Alaska native. We were on the road system, though, and about 55 miles west-southwest of Fairbanks. There were many challenges in living in a new home. Uh, we learned to deal with the extreme cold of winter when temperatures could go to 60 below. We learned some things about interacting with the people of Nanano and, uh, you know, different culture. We were stretched to do new things. In the first five and a half years of our service with the VFCM, we attended the North Star Baptist Church in Anderson, about 25 miles away from Nanana. And when we arrived, immediately, Lori and I began teaching Sunday school classes. I played piano in the church service, for the for church services, and occasionally preached. On Sunday morning, I was finishing up my duties at the radio station, and I got a call. And the uh, pastor said, I can't preach today. Can you preach? Uh, so, yeah, those things could happen. 
Fortunately, uh, that particular morning, I had uh, Lord give me some kind of thing that for some reason I was rehearsing through my mind. Point A, point B, point C. I had no reason why, but then I realized why well, soon enough. Uh, about a year after our arrival, I became station manager of KIM in Nenana. I'd never been a station manager before, so uh, there was a lot to learn. Uh, the John verses in James 1, verses 2 to 4, where it says, uh, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. As Christians, we should expect to face trials sometimes. 1 Peter 4.12 says that. Uh, it's not an unusual thing. It shouldn't be thought of as an unusual thing. Uh, and we had trials. One such was uh, two years before we left for Alaska, we discovered that our son Elisha had an enlarged aorta, uh, the main artery coming out of the heart. And there was concern that if it got any larger, it could burst. And in the fall of 2007, genetic testing revealed that Elisha had a genetic condition known as Lowy Dietz syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder that makes the tissues not as elastic and resilient as they should be as they normally are. Now this condition had only been recently discovered, but doctors were also able to determine that this was the exact same thing that had resulted in the uh, surprise homegoing of our five-year-old son Nathaniel in 1995 while we were still living in Cedarville. So doctors believed that uh, Elisha should have open-heart surgery to repair the aorta. He had that surgery, and uh, shortly after he had it, and this was in the fall of 2007. Shortly after he had it, it became apparent that uh, there were some problems. And so a month to the day of the first surgery, he had a second open heart surgery in Seattle. And one week after this surgery, on December 13th of 2007, Elisha went to be with the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, that was a hard thing. It was not the outcome we had prayed for, and the fact that it was the second child who died from this condition didn't make it any easier. In some ways, for me at least, it made it worse because I thought I knew what I was going to expect and didn't really look forward to just the whole process of going through. And uh, But yet it was the path that God had chosen for us, and uh, He is faithful. And Elisha knew the Lord, and he had a testimony. And... Uh, he said it very clearly. And his favorite song was Trust and Obey. And uh, it was a song that we had to you know, think about the words. And even his testimony, uh, and the last time I talked to him, when he said, I'm trusting in Jesus. And quoted the verse in Philippians that talks about, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We decided to have the funeral there in Nenana rather than returning to Ohio and uh, had Elisha's body buried in the Nenana Cemetery. And during his funeral, a number of people came out despite temperatures of 45 below that particular day. It was the winter solstice, 20, December 20th. The gospel was clearly preached by our pastor. The outpouring of support from the community and churches, people that we didn't even know was incredible. And uh, it was a way where God demonstrated his faithfulness, providing for the needs in that, in that way. And the following years, we were there at Voice for Christ. There were various trials, various things that were uh, joys, successes. As you would expect, the Lord was faithful and provided the needs. Several years ago, there was a leadership change in VFCM. And by last April, it became clear that we weren't going to be able to stay at VFCM anymore. We had to leave. And this was hard for us. Excuse me. We had gone to Alaska with the understanding that if it was the Lord's will, we would be there for the rest of our lives. Now it was clear to us that this was not God's plan. I still felt the call to minister through radio in rural Alaska. And late last spring, we had learned of a possible opportunity for our work with KCAM Radio in Glen Allen, Alaska. So we visited with them for several days in June, and they invited us.
us to come as volunteers, which we did from September through mid-November. And after that, we were uh, convinced that this was what God wanted us to do. This was an opportunity that had been opened up. They also had issued us an invitation to come. So we moved to Glen Allen in late January and began working with KCAM full-time, uh, arriving just in time to help with the busy sports schedule. And uh, since that time, I've been playing the piano in the Glen Allen Community Chapel where we've been attending. Uh, in mid-March, the church secretary moved to another community, so Lori has been volunteering as the church secretary until we came here last week. And uh, so that's where we've been at this point. The ministry of KCAM is similar in many respects to that of the VFCM stations that I've talked about before when I was here that we worked at in Nana, though Glen Allen, where KCAM is, is located much farther away from major cities, and the area it serves is a rural area of Alaska. Uh, Glen Allen is nearly 200 miles from Anchorage, it's 250 miles south of Fairbanks, and uh, 115 miles from Valdez. It is a hub, in a sense, for the Copper River Valley, and for, uh, because we have two highways coming together there. It's in the Copper River Basin region of South Central an area roughly the size of the state of Ohio with a population of about 3,000 people, so they're spread out. Uh, this population is uh, comprised of white as well as Alaska Native people. KCAM has an interesting history. It was started uh, by missionary Vince Joy, who was the founder and head of Central Alaska Mission. And Joy saw radio as a way to get God's word into remote places that pastors and uh, planes would have trouble reaching, or at least reliably, because of the inclement weather. So KCAM first went on the air on Good Friday, March 27th, 1964. And that date may be familiar to some of you. It was the day of what's come to be known as the Good Friday earthquake, which did major damage in Alaska and resulted in the deaths of a number of folks as well. The KCAM facilities were constructed but the station was not operating yet because they were waiting for permission from the Federal Communications Commission to start broadcasting. But when the earthquake happened, the National Guard called and said, uh, you need to start broadcasting right away. So they started broadcasting under emergency authorization on Good Friday in order to provide badly needed communication and a sense of lifeline to the folks that were in uh, the, the uh, area of Alaska, South Central Alaska, including even Anchorage. KCAM has been broadcasting ever since then. And on Labor Day weekend of 2011, KCAM FM, known as 88.7 The Light, began broadcasting as well. Uh, the FM station broadcasts primarily contemporary Christian music. Uh, they also broadcast some Bible teaching programs, but it's mostly music. The KCAM stations are under the organization called Joy Media Ministries. Uh, JMM has six board members, uh, and they require a majority of them, two-thirds, to be Copper Valley area residents so that they maintain local control and can best respond to the needs of the area listeners. KCAM is dedicated to performing uh, effective broadcasting ministry through evangelism instruction as well as public service. Uh, the purpose is to spread the gospel through any means. As followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have opportunities to uh, instruct, encourage, challenge anyone who will listen, anyone who will hear. Uh, the majority of KCA and broadcasting is dedicated to Bible teaching programs as well as Christian music. Uh, we also service the needs of the community through broadcasting uh, various issues, news, weather, local events, announcements, and information of interest. KCAM is truly a community radio station. Several years ago, a team of, from Asbury College in Kentucky did a survey, a scientific survey of area residents. And one of the things that came out of that survey was it indicated that during some point in the day, 63% uh, of Copper Valley residents would tune in to either KCAM, AM, or 88.7, the light. Now this is exciting to me because it indicates that we truly have a platform and a great opportunity to share the gospel of Christ to unbelievers there. And that's not just those who live there.
some might look at that population and you would say, well, you don't have that many folks that live in Glen Allen. There's only 400 folks that live in Glen Allen and you have 3,000 in the whole Concord River Valley. But we're at the hub of two of Alaska's major highways. So we've got four folks coming down from Fairbanks and headed off to Anchorage or coming down from Fairbanks and heading to Valdez or heading to Chittenden to fish. And so summertime, yes, there are a lot of folks that are coming through. And the radio is there for the residents as well as those passing through. The KCAM stations broadcast a local message service four times a day called Caribou Platters. Now this allows people who are in remote areas without any two-way communication to receive personal messages from friends and family. And uh, we also air a local community bulletin board service three times a day. KCAM airs a number of local events such as area school basketball and hockey games, the annual Copper Basin 300 sled dog race, as well as parades, fundraising auctions for several community groups. And uh, this is ways that KCAM provides community service. Uh, KCAM AM is a commercial station, so much of the funding required for its operation is obtained from selling advertising in the community. And then once a year, the KCAM stations hold a three-day share -thon, an open house to raise funds for special projects. This past October, we were there during that share -thon, and I got to be on the air several times, along with other KCAM staff hosting the share -thon. And uh, that was a great experience. Lori and Michaela were also there. And Michaela was blowing up balloons and, and just being able to help in various ways. And she got to be on the air a few times. Uh, it was a great encouragement to us, uh, being a number of community folks who were coming in to express their support for KCAM. Uh, the sheriff on raised over $35,000 in three days, which may not seem a big deal here, but in a small community like that, I thought it was a big deal. And that uh, funding was going toward a project that we have to provide housing for new KCAM staff. Uh, we have a brochure about that. Uh, it reminds me that uh, on the welcome table we have some several oops, several things there, including a brochure uh, that talks about this construction project. We also have uh, some forms there if you want to fill out, if you would like to receive email from us or in some other ways express your desire to be involved through prayer or through giving or whatever. Uh, so that's there, and uh, feel free to fill that out or take a look at the other things uh, that we have. Um, there's a need for funding for the construction project as well as for people to come and help with the project this summer. So uh, that might be, uh, if that would work out in, in your schedule, we'd be able to do that. This construction project is one of the things that we're asking you to pray about. Another matter for prayer, and I shared this in the ABF because somebody had asked about that, was the financial support so we can continue serving with KCAM. Uh, though KCAM receives community funding for station operations through the advertising, this does not cover the salaries for the full-time staff of KCAM. And therefore, we're missionaries with KCAM and must have financial support so we can receive a salary from KCAM. Now, you've been faithfully supporting us financially and by other means for over 15 years, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, we greatly appreciate that while we were in the transition uh, to KCAM, you continued our financial support, and you regularly inquired as to our prayer requests and other needs. That was a great encouragement to us. Uh, over the years, we've lost support for various reasons. People that uh, go on to be with the Lord, uh, several churches that no longer are exist in existence, uh, we also lost some additional support during the transition to KCAM. So, on paper, it appears that our support level for what we need is at about 55% of the monthly need that we have. Uh, however, thus far, special gifts to KCAM that we've received have made it possible that we will be getting paid the amount that we, uh, our support, will be getting paid what we are supposed to. We know through the end of the, for this month and into the next month, so that's a good thing. We're very thankful for that. We appreciate your prayers as we uh, also are still getting settled into the community of Glen Allen and having wisdom as to uh, what our involvement can be in the radio station and outside of the radio station. As I told you, you know, we've had some folks leave in the church that have moved away, and I know they would like me to be more involved in the music perhaps take some leadership in the music part of it, and Lori as secretary, and we just want to pray that we have the wisdom to know how to be involved in those things. I'm 
still learning how to work as effectively as possible in this new rated environment I find ourselves in. We are working with a team of professionals that uh, are encouraging in a good way to do a good job as we want to do a good job for the Lord. Uh, and we need wisdom just to know how to best serve in the community that we're there. And as I close here, I just want to, again, praise God for what he's done through us and for us. Uh, he's proven himself faithful to us, and we can trust him. He has always met our material and spiritual needs. And we've had trials, but the Lord has brought us through those trials. Our faith has been tested, but as Paul says in Ephesians 6:16. 6, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you shall, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Our faith has been tested, but uh, we, by faith, walk with him. Uh, by faith, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who has uh, redeemed us, and he will bring us safely to heaven at his appointed time. We believe that. We've reminded that the gospel of Christ must always be the supreme thing. We've come to know someone we've been in Alaska who would seek to add to the gospel, saying you have to do certain things in order that you can be saved. But we know what Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says. By grace through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourself. This is the gift of God. But not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works with God as a uh, for a day that we should walk in them. Philippians 1, 6 says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. You're glad to have this opportunity to tell you what the Lord has done and to thank you for the part that you've had in the ministry God has given us in Christian Radio to rural Alaska. And uh, just, again, thank you for this opportunity that we've had. And, uh, Pastor, do I still have time to, uh, play a song here? And yes, we do. We have time to do that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Remember, you're going to turn it over to me. For right. Time. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, I just want to make sure. And if that's okay, then I'll, uh, I'll make my way over there and we'll do that. He's going to go ahead and get set up.